Hey guys, so today I want to show you a package that can help you solve a very specific problem in Go or a challenge that you might face if you're using some Go routines. This package is called Single Flight. It's built, um, or I believe it's maintained by the Google team, but it's not part of the standard library. So here's a simple code that does not use this, so we can demo the problem that we're trying to solve. If you look here, we have this main function, it's a single file project, so there's nothing going on here other than what you're seeing. So we have this service that accepts a cache, and then we call this get data function, uh, give it a key called example, and we pass this five times, and basically call it five times uh, through a Go routine. There's five Go routines calling this. Now if you go up and see how the function is implemented, here you see that we just check the cache first. If it's there, we return it. And if it's not there, we try to do some sort of an expensive operation. Here I'm trying to simulate it by just waiting for two seconds and then assigning some string to this data variable. After we finish this, we update the cache and return the data. Now, let me run this code. Here you see something very interesting. So we have five core routines calling the same function. And with every call, like we're having this cache miss, and essentially every time we call this with every new core routine, what's happening is we're having to go through this expensive operation and then return it. So we're never really returning anything from the cache. Now, this feels like some sort of a race condition. However, think of this a bit differently. Like, what if this was an external API and you have some sort of a rate limiter? What ends up happening here is you end up calling the same exact endpoint, asking for the same exact resource five times, and it's going to hit it five times. So if, so if you have a rate limiter, you already hit the limit. And another example would be like something like this, or if you have some sort of a cache store, and that cache is expired and you have to update it, then you end up having to update it five times without really knowing if it updated the first time or not. So it's, it's pretty problematic, and you can tell that this is like a very simple example, but if this was a bigger product, then this would be a very significant resource, um, wasted resource, essentially. Now, luckily, we have this package. It's called Single Flight, and the whole purpose of this package is just to suppress the number of coroutines or requests going through and, and doing something, essentially, the number of calls. So what happens is it kind of wraps different goroutine calls and only allows a single goroutine to essentially make that call, get the resource, get the value it, it wants, and then just return that for every other goroutine as well. So I can demo this as well and show you how this works. Here I have the same exact code essentially with only one difference. I have this single flat group here added to my struct and the main function is still the same. Now, if you look at the implementation, all I did here is just wrapped my logic that I used to do the expensive call um, with this single um, single flight dot do, and then just pass on these, and then do the, my expensive operation here. So, if I run this code as well, let's go run dot. Notice what happens here. We have the first one as cache miss, which is expected. But then all these other goroutines, like the other goroutines that we have, they all are sharing the same exact value that was returned from the first one. So you notice here we have this shared value also being returned, and we have the result. So the result is always returning as exactly the same, so from the cache. Now this shared value here is telling us that all goroutines are sharing the same exact call. So even like the first goroutine, if you see like we have five different kind of printed values, shared result equal to five times. So all, all go routines are, are telling us like we're sharing the same call. So this is pretty amazing because now, even though you have multiple go routine fetching or asking for the same resource, only one of them will actually go through, make the call, get the data that you need and share that with the rest of the go routines that you have. So you already saved a lot of resource. And if you're, for example, calling some sort of an external API, this will already save you some um, API hits. So like you can respect more the rate limiter. And yeah, that's um, the idea. So there's more 
there's more to this package. So what I used here is this function called do, and it simply accepts a key and a function and returns the result shared in an error. You also have one called do channel, which is similar to do, but it returns a channel. And then you got this forgot function, which I have uh, some code here that shows you how it works. It's commented at the moment. Essentially, you just call um, single flight dot forget and you give it a key. And what it does, it just forgets that key that you just cached. That's pretty much all of it. So yeah, this is just a simple but super elegant library that I found and I started using recently and it's been super useful for these use cases. So there's another implementation that is um, kind of this repo here, which allows you to do the same functionality but more toward um, kind of a distributed environment and not just a single service. So the single flight was created by this person, Brad Fitzpatrick. And this guy was one of the people kind of writing the Go programming language. So, and he wrote it, I believe, trying to solve this thundering herd problem, which in a way kind of feels like what I just described, where you have multiple resources asking for the same exact thing all at the same time. And so end up having like some sort of a race condition, I mean. Yeah. So I found this blog post here that kind of have some good images describing how this looks like. So here you see, without single flight, you can have multiple requests trying to ask for the same resource. In this case, it's like find user A um, from a database. And every single request will get the same exact value, but you're just requesting it three times. If you add the single flight idea here, what happens is you have all these requests going through a single flight filter, if you want to think of it. And then the single flight here will only allow a single call to go through the database. And then you get your value, get it back, and then share it with all these requests because you're essentially requesting the same resource. So you can see how useful this is, especially in cases, for example, where you have a cache and a database and you want to, for example, update the cache. So you allow a single call to go through and then use that call to just update the cache and then continue with the flow. Super useful package. I've been using it for a while and I thought I'd do a quick demo show you how it works and maybe you'll try it in your next project. All right, that's all.